Hey, brother. What's up, brother? Hey, bro. How you feeling? I'm well, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, yeah where are you? Here. Yeah, where are you? I'm in uh, I'm in Queens at my grandmother's house. Okay, nice. Yeah. Nice, nice. You're enjoying the weather. Kind of. It's nice. Yeah. You know, it's a little breezy today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how you feeling, man? I'm good, man. I'm um, just out here visiting family, uh, taking it all in one day at a time, just like yeah. everybody, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. One day at a time. Thank you for joining me, man. I really of course, you. brother. You know, you already know. You already yeah, know. you're my guy, man. Forever. Forever, forever. bro. Forever. No. Anything you need, I got you. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. That. You already know. Thank you. So let's 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 get into it. Um, you burst onto the scene in like 2013 with your mm -hmm. Jack Coke and Cadillac project, yeah, yeah. and uh, that kind of got the attention of people. Um, yeah. but it was when your 2000 what 16 uh, yeah. project came out, yeah, and you got the Grammy nomination, yeah, amazing. Yeah, uh, tell yes. us about that experience. Tell us about it. Man, from I mean, I've known you for how long? Like uh, at least no, 15 years. Yeah, yeah, at least. And Wardell introduced us, right? Yeah, was he Wardell did. Introduced. Yeah, yeah. That's so correct. it's like Wardell was one of the first people. So I'll start. I'll give a brief synopsis. So I've been everywhere. My dad was in the army, so I've lived everywhere in my life. I was born in Germany. Um, I'm Panamanian. Like it's it's so many different things culturally, but. My uh, father's from Indiana and my mom's from here. Okay. So I was living in Indiana and I was like, you know what? I got to get out of here and I'm doing music. You know, this is yeah. what I'm going to do. My whole family on my dad's side sings. So oh, dope. My, my dad and every his whole family, like Ro uh, Rosie Gaines. You know what Rosie Gaines is? Of course. That's my auntie. So wow. She passed a few years side. ago, right? Huh? She passed a few years no, ago. she's here. She's still alive. Oh, she is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, she's I'm still sorry. Alive. Okay. Are you good? She yeah. just, she's really low and she's also like, you know, mental health things. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. And so it's kind of like, it's sad. It's sad. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that's my dad's side of the family. And so early on, music was a part of my life. Loving Prince and just, my dad's also a pastor. So it was gospel oh, music. Okay. Yeah. So it was like, you know, I had all the influences. For, and then my family's Panamanian, so it was like a lot of reggae music, Caribbean music, Spanish music. Like, right. So it's like mixing it all in together. Yeah. So um, I had left Indiana, and I was like, I can't do this. And I moved to New York, and I kind of dove right in. And actually, I dove in partying. <laughs> because I knew that, you know, you build relationships, and you, but it was the right parties with the right people. That's right. And... In that, I met somebody who introduced me to Wardell. And from there, like, you know, I I had worked with people and helping people and with style and all different types of things. So being around, everybody thought I was a stylist. Yeah. And I was trying to get into fashion. So, <laughs> But then, you know, I started to talk to people like Wardell, who was up at BMI. And I was like, he would always be like, where's the music? Where's the music? Yeah. And, you know, people like that. And I, I watched him listen to what he loved and people around him and who he introduced me to and the caliber of people. Yeah. And it was like, this isn't like a game. Right. You're either going to do it or you're not going to do it. Right. And if you want to do it, these are the people who can help you facilitate that and put it together if you're smart. Right. So I say that to say Wardell introduced me to you and I met so many people. So, and I was helping other artists and I had to figure out what was going to be my entry point. How was I going to do it that was going to be different from everybody else? Because mm -hmm. I always used to hear, there's one in a million chance. There's a whole bunch of artists that want to do the same thing. It's hard. You should have something to fall back on. Don't do it. You know? Right. I've had discouragement and I've had encouragement. So you know what I mean? So it's when you have the balance of both, you can either listen to the discouragement or you can go with both. With the Absolutely. encouragement, you got to listen to self. So That's right. So uh, I had been working with Miguel and Luke James and all of the Bridget Kelly, all of the homies, and I was watching them get signed and drop music. And I was like, you know what? I want my music to be completely separate, but comprised of all of the things that I'm inspired by, from the rock, the country, the reggae, 
the Caribbean, the gospel, R&B, uh, super soul, like, you know, and how am I going to do that? Right. Because there's so many things and so many things I'm inspired by when they, everybody's, I'm, and as I'm going and watching Miguel and other people that homies that are signed, I'm listening too. I'm listening to what they're telling them because I'm the underdog. I'm sitting in the corner. Like I'm just the cool dude in the back, like, right. telling, but I'm listening. And they're like, you know, um, what do you pe want people to know about you? What do you want people to think about you when they think about you? What is your brand? Like all of the things. And I was like, okay, I got to identify these things for myself. Mm -hmm. So I knew that <laughs> when I first started, if you remember, I had this like cowboy hat that I used to wear all the time. Yeah. And the thing about that hat is my dad used to, my dad's from Indiana. So he used to like watch Westerns all of the time. Right. He's like a country Indiana dude. Right. So he likes Westerns and he likes cowboy hats. And so one day I went into this store and I saw this black hat and it was not like his hat. It was a little more fly. And I was like, oh, I can pull this off. Reminds me of my dad. So I did it. And it became a thing. I wasn't even thinking of it like that. But then I identified that that's how people, that's how people recognize you is your thing. Mm -hmm. What is the thing? That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. And that was just one of my things. So the, the agenda was to, how do I show you all of the things, you know what I mean, that mm -hmm. I have, but people can only take you in doses. Right. And for me, I'm impatient because I'm ahead. So uh, so I was like, all right, this is how I want to do this. I'm going to do a three-part project called Coke, Jack, and Cadillac to introduce myself to people of my first experiences. So uh, Coke was my first girlfriend. She was sweet, like Coca-Cola, <laughs> addicting. Yeah, bad for me like cocaine or anything else. And yeah, Coca Cola is bad for you too, but but addicting to where I kept going back to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, which is that sugar. That's what they do to you. you put sugar yeah. in it. You want more of it. Yes. You know? Then you go into the Jack Daniels, and it was my first drink, and I felt like I'm like Jack. Like I'm smooth, but I come with a punch. It's not like it's not easy. You know right. what I mean? Right. You don't feel it. Right. And then Cadillac was my first car that my father gave me. So it was like all of my first things, my first experiences, because they say that your your first love is like the blueprint to the way that you react to love further and henceforth, you know, from the time. Yeah. And so I understood that even in my relationships after my first love at 19. I'm, I'm just giving you because at 19 was my first love. So that's why all my branding is Ro James XIX. Right. Because it's the beginning for me. And right. I want people to tap into my beginning so you can follow me through my journey. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like I love all, the brand, all the branding things, you know? I and love that. Scorpio, I was born November 19th. This is nine is a number, 19, you know, the num numerology. It's just so many different things. So I was like, this pertains to me. Right. But um, so I released the project in three parts, Coke, and I geared that towards women and the way that I feel emotionally. Jack was a little more gritty and more aggressive with the lyrics and Cadillac was for the ride. Yeah. And uh, on my Coke project, I put out a song called Pledge of Allegiance and Pledge of Allegiance was like the first original song that was mine that I released that people could, because before that I had done a cover for Radiohead Creek. Right. I remember. Because in my head, I really wanted to be, I wanted to be the rock version of R&B versus R&B, R&B. Let me show you both sides and, and a different approach to it. And um, so that's how I, that's why I decided to do the projects that way. So you can get, and each part of the project had a different texture to it. I'm trying to speed through it for you. No, no, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Listen, you, you've been on the scene for such a long time. And I think that people think a lot of times it's like an overnight success, oh, no, but no. you've been on the scene for a long time. I have yeah. seen, I've heard iterations of your career and of yeah, your yeah. for many years yeah. tell me over this time how has your voice changed tremendously man because i think that even i think we had a, like how many lessons or like probably like four or five not that many not that many yeah but we we've, we've worked and i i remember <laughs> being scared and not really understanding my voice uh -huh. and all that it could do. And I remember something you said to me specifically. You said, why are you singing so low? You can sing up. And what you was really saying is, I'm, I need to be singing on top of the note 
yes. versus singing under it because I was comfortable there and just chilling. But there was another like part of my voice that I wasn't using. Yes. And I wasn't activating it because I was trying to be too cool in my singing. That's and correct. It's like, yo, really? It, it played a role in my mind in such a way because when I started to do that, I started to identify different things that I could do with my voice too. Because I would never use my falsetto. If you remember, I, don't, I wasn't using falsetto. Mm -hmm. And then when I started to sing up, I was like, oh, oh, I got things. I got things I can do. Yeah. I got so many more things, you know? And uh, yeah, I, and that was also when going into my project, the Coke Jack and Cadillacs, I was able to explore the different sounds and textures. And I learned how certain like uh, portions and parts of my voice would lend and I would sing a certain way and it'd be like, oh, there's the country in your voice. You know what I'm saying? But then on the flip side of it, you as you sing more, you become more confident and more free in your voice. You're not overthinking. You're just singing and feeling. You're connecting the feeling to the voice. So do you and find... So, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Finish, finish. Yeah, I was just going to say, as I evolved and as I started to explore different types of music and I just like experiment with music, it made me more excited about it because, but it made me more frustrated too, because it's like, here I am, this R&B singer, and I'm expected to sing like this, but I could do all of this. And how do I share this with y'all if y'all only want to hear this? Imagine. And they're only promoting this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yo. It's frustrating because I have to wait until you catch up with this so I can show you this. You so know? let me ask. And, so, yeah. so, so, you, what is the difference for you to sing in the studio versus singing live? What are the differences for you? Um. Wow. Okay. So singing in the studio, you definitely are more calm. You're more chill. You're more focused, and you can redo it. You can punch. You can fix it. You can do all the different things in the studio. But when you're live, you singing soft doesn't come off the same way on that stage. You got to sing out. And your your energy and your diction and your the texture, you know what I'm saying? Like the dynamics of your voice. You have to know what that is, you know what I mean? Because it is a vast difference between the stage and the studio but i love both of them mm -hmm. you can lose your voice on the stage if you're not thinking and actually doing the right things with your voice because your adrenaline is up you you might be screaming and you ain't got to scream mm -hmm. because you can't hear yourself you know what i mean in the studio you got the headphones on you can hear yourself you have you may have ears or whatnot and sometimes you still can't hear yourself mm -hmm. because even in even live in the ears i need to hear i need to feel the crowd i need to hear their participation i need that bass and that knock on the stage so I, a lot of times i take my ear out because what, you know, what 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 kind of adjustments do you make on stage when you feel maybe i'm pushing myself maybe i'm doing too much what kind of adjustment do you make vocally um i'll hold back and i'll make them turn me up I mean, I'll, I'll sing softer to where that I'll get closer to the mic and just be more intimate. But to be honest with you, I'm still learning my stage dynamic. I'm still learning it to this day because different rooms give different feels, and some is more. Some rooms are tighter. Some rooms are more open. Some rooms are wider or, or taller. You know what I mean? Some room. Some rooms change from the sound check to the time you get the people in because it's different. And then the room the, up. Yeah, and then the people running the sound have to be able to adjust. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then you're hoping that they adjust by the time you get to the song that you have to, you know what I mean? So it's right. all, it's so many dynamics. So And I had to learn that, yeah. It, it takes time, and I was going to learn you that. You did this fantastic tour with Maxwell. I was just about to say something about that. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell me about that tour for you. What did you learn about your voice during that tour? That was my first tour, like my first tour, tour. Major tour. Yeah, because all the little things I did before, like I would do like um, like uh, SOBs and Irving Plazas in New York and do a show in LA here, show in Atlanta. But then 
once my single single hit the radio and it went, it was like, bro, you're gonna have to sing every day. And I didn't really, I just saw a B. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really understand that I gotta sing this every day and it gotta sound like this every day, every mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. And um, I, Still hadn't adjusted to my stage fright, any of it. You know what I mean? So going onto that stage was really like the shark tank for me. I was the baby shark in the big shark tank. Like, oh, shoot. And because we did arenas. I did Madison Square Garden. I, like, I did all the things. First album, you know? So it was like, yeah. but Maxwell, he showed me a lot. He told me a lot about my voice. Not what my voice, but just. What did he tell uh, you? Yeah. Don't, he was like, don't talk to people. Stop talking. <laughs> like, don't talk before your show. Uh, he has his regimens and things he would do. Uh, like fish, eat water, 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 always water, 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 forever water. That's like a big thing. Uh, and what else did he do? He steamed a lot. He steamed his voice. Mm-hmm. And yeah, mostly just like the one thing he would tell me all the time is don't talk because I talk. Like fans come up to me, I'm talking to you. Like people come up to me, I'm talking. Like ah, I'm, sorry, I'm taking pictures, you know. And another thing, I smoke, like I'm not cigarettes, smoke weed. Uh-huh. And he'd be like, "How, how do you sing like that and you smoke? I don't understand how your voice is still so rich." But he was like, "You know, it's gonna happen as as you sing on the road, it's gonna it start to gra- it's gonna start rubbing." I don't remember the exact words he says, but basically that's the that's the energy of it. Like my yeah. voice is gonna, and I did notice that because even as I had to sing it every day for two, three years straight, real life, almost every day I had to sing those songs. I noticed that my falsetto got a little bit more raspy, a little weaker, a little weaker. I wasn't, and then when I would be off, I wasn't singing. So then I'd have to go back to it, and it's like. You really do have to maintain your voice. And, you know, even though I smoking is an aid for my anxiety with just in general, because that's the only drug or anything like that I do. Right. It's like, you know, is it worth it? That's a good question. And what do you want? And, and what is your long run? Because on um, one part of it is part of my brand in the sense that I just I'm I'm me and I'm, I'm raw. My voice is raspy. Uh, it's, it's husky, the music is sensual, but like it's just all a part of me. But then the other part of me is I see myself, you know what I'm saying, in a mm-hmm. different place, right? And I can't compare it to anybody, so the, the agenda is to be the greatest me vocally, too, because I'm gonna have to do this all the time. So, so what have you what kind of discipline? have you developed so that you can deliver your voice the same way singing every day um i have been we did something the last time i saw you Uh like some vocal Mm warm-ups and it was like you know i you're gonna curse me out but i never did vocal warm-ups ever on tour interesting never interesting i never did it because it was like so many things happening for me i was Mm -hmm. uh doing promo i was on radio Mm -hmm. then i get to the venue i'm on sound check and i was first right so it's like sound check do a little uh pre-meeting greet then i'm about to go on the stage right that's it and then i get off the stage and i do another meet and greet and then we do it all over again so it's like i didn't vocal warm up i didn't but i did drink more water um and i that's even now i drink pretty much nothing but water because it helps and it don't help for today, it helps for tomorrow. Yeah, it's after, the hydration. You know what I mean? It's the hydration. Yeah, hydration. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. steaming, I do all of that. Um, herbs, different teas, different, like low caffe- no caffeine, preferably. But, you know, different things that help my voice. Gingers. You know, I've done the things and the research to figure out what's best for my voice. I was going to ask you that. Okay, yeah. wonderful. So do you yeah. find that if you drink, do you drink alcohol? No. I mean, okay. every now and then, but not like. Okay. But if you were not drink- like, not like I used to. <laughs> if you drink alcohol, do you find that it affects your voice? Oh, let me tell you something, man. 
one time I used to get, like I said, I used to have stage fright, God. I used to be shook because I never knew how it was going to come out. Is the sound going to be right? It would be, yeah. be in my head. Sure. So I would drink before and be wondering why my voice is not as fluid and as free as it's uh-huh. supposed to be. I felt constricted. Uh-huh. It's because it dried my voice out. And I drink, I don't, I only drink whiskey. So brown oh, liquor yeah. in particular, it's like, it's going to get you. Mm-hmm. So I stopped drinking before shows. Even to, I, it's almost like everybody around me is like, man, you're so paranoid now. You ain't used to be like this. But it's like, I know it works for me getting on that stage. If I got to sing for an hour, 30 minutes into it, I'm going to start feeling it if I drink some alcohol before because it will become, it became ritual with my band that we take a shot before I go on stage. Right. So imagine taking a shot right before you go and sing a falsetto song or yeah. something, something up off top. Like, right. Your voice is like, whoa, 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 we ain't ready yet. We, we still try. Yeah. You know, so. I had to take that out of my show. Everybody knows, like, do not give him a drink before. Don't offer it because he's not going to do it. Uh, very yeah. wise. Very, very wise. wise. Very yeah. wise. Let me. So, so tell me this. Where did you sing from? Die for Got to. But you know what? Every now I check myself because I'll find myself singing from here. Are you talking about vocally? Or are you talking about from from? So let, let, let's talk about this because. Right now, okay. I love to talk about this. Diaphragm to me is one of the biggest misnomers in our business, right? Because mm-hmm. can you tell me what the diaphragm is? I can't, but I know about where it's at <laughs> and I know how to access it and what, but yeah. So the diaphragm is a muscle. Right. And so for instance, you're a muscular guy. What happens if you did 50 curls with your left arm what would happen by the next day? I'll be a little sore. And what else? And I'll do it. I'll be able to do it even more the next day because I think stretched so? it. You think so? Yeah. I mean, the next day. You would have fatigue, wouldn't you? When you know you would have fatigue? A little bit. Yes. But I would push myself. I would push myself. The, I'm just thinking yeah. about, yeah. Yeah. So this is the thing. The diaphragm is a muscle. I want to challenge you on this. The diaphragm is a muscle. And if you use muscle to sing, what happens? You create exhaustion. Mm. All right? So what, what mm. you really have to develop is your breath. Because the breath is the only thing you need when you sing. Mm-hmm. I always like to challenge things. You do like say that. that all the time. All yes, the yes, time. Yes, yes, yes. All the time. So I, as you're working, as you're exploring, and as you get ready to go on the road again with Mantic, because that's going to happen, I want you to really focus on trying to access your breath as the source and not a muscle sensation. Let me tell you something interesting. I have asthma, right? Uh huh. And people are like, how do you sing asthma through asthma? It's interesting though, because you're saying this breath with, with asthma, you're often losing your breath, but I have uh-huh. to sing with your breath. But you still have breath when you have asthma, even if it's even it's, if it's even if it's even if it's constricted, there's mm-hmm. still air moving through your cords, right? And that's, that's true. all yeah. you need. That's all you need. I have another question. So every singer has a regimen. Mm-hmm. What is your regimen now, daily, and what's your regimen before a show? My daily regimen mm-hmm. is the same as my show regimen, just because I've been on tour, so it just became a part of my everyday practice. Definitely, I wake up and drink water. Okay. Uh, I definitely, I mean, of course, you brush your teeth, but there's water. Um, but tea, I make a ginger tea. Um I got like turmeric and ginger and like pineapple beet, just just different things that I make it with for my voice in the morning, and kind of throughout the day too. But I'm really just drinking water more and oil of oregano. Okay. Do you so, breathe through your nose or your mouth on a regular? When you sing, honestly, I breathe through my mouth, and okay. that dries you out. I no, you great. Me that. I think it's great. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it opens up your back, your back of the throat. It opens up the soft palate, right? Okay. But then you have the space to sing. So I think it's the best thing to do. 
you from. Okay, cool. You know, a lot of times if you breathe through the nose, the moment you release the voice through your mouth, all the Yeah. So something to be mindful of, right? Um, what is the great greatest lesson you've learned as a singer? Um the greatest lesson I've learned as a singer that I can pretty much do anything with my voice, like you said, with breathing, but then actually pushing yourself. Like, you know, I'll hear somebody singing and hitting a note, and I'm like, I'll never be able to do that. And I can, you know what I mean? If I do, if I can, if I practice and push myself to do it and actually breathe right, I could do it. What you do know you what I mean? So you can always change and grow your voice, huh? What do you love most about your voice? Oh man, um, it's versatility, man. Like, I love that my voice is gritty. I love that my voice is light. I love that it can be loud. I love that it can be intimate. Um, I've learned all the textures of my voice, and I love that. I don't really sound like anybody. I keep getting a Prince comparison. People say that. Yeah, but I'm not trying to even sound like Prince. And it's like, my natural even talking tone is close to my vocal tone. So this is my voice. You know what I mean? Right. It's not like I'm trying to sound like him. But yeah, I love the fact that I can have my thing that sounds like me. And when you hear my voice, you know that it's me. Is there something you wish you could do better with your voice? Sing higher. I don't know why. Everyone wants to sing higher. Every, you know what I'm saying? That's it. <laughs> Outside of that, like, nah. I just, I feel like, I feel like, honestly, even when I go to, like, homie sessions, and I feel like a lot of them are stuck in one section of how they demonstrate their voice. Uh -huh. And with me, I never allowed that from the jump. So I'm so vast with everything that I can do. So ideas are different for me. When, when I hear... When you sing louder and when mm -hmm. you sing softer, mm -hmm. do they feel different for you? Meaning, do you sing from a different place or are you singing from the same place but making a color choice? Oh, um, I think usually when I sing out, so for instance, I have a song called Holy Water. Uh -huh. And for me, when I sing that song, I think I'm singing from a place of victory, a place of of triumph, a place of encouragement, almost like witnessing to people. like, uh -huh. And I'm speaking life to you. But when it's more intimate, I feel like I draw back into myself and I'm singing from a place of sensitivity from me to right. you too. But right. it's still the same energy. It's just about the emotion. Right. But but when I when I ask you that question, I mean... Are you singing internally, meaning your voice, your functioning of your voice? Is it is the loud and the soft in the same place within your voice, or are they in different places? Oh, yeah. That's a great question. That's a great question. Um, I think it's the same place. It's the same. It's your same tone. Yeah, it's your voice. Okay. So so when, you, when you're in a studio, for instance, you talk about the studio and how you found mm -hmm. these different variations of your voice. Are those physical changes for your voice or are they just colors that you created with your same voice? Oh, my bad. You broke up on the last part. Okay. I was like, uh-oh, it's okay. going to me. <laughs> <laughs> so what I was saying is that when you are in the studio, for instance, or when you're on stage, and mm -hmm. you are making choices with your voice. Are they coming from a different place inside, or is it just the color that you created? Oh, both. I think okay. Both. Tell me about I, that. I think that um, I see emotions in color. I, I see songs in colors, too. And it, colors are hot and cold, and they're based on emotion. Um, love is, I mean, sex would be more red and the color is more in the way that you feel. Like, how, you saw me, I was like, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> red is just like, it suggests a more risky, like, grittier 
sexy honesty, I guess. Uh -huh. But then I guess at the same time, red could be anger too. Uh huh. It can. So where does the that color that from? I create when you sing is red, emotion? Where, where does it come from in your body when you sing in a red from your vocal? I'm talking about your you voice. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where where do you feel it in your body when you sing from that red place? Where do you feel it? Your heart. Your heart. Definitely your heart. Oh, your voice. I want to know about your voice. Oh, in my voice, you mean? Um, yeah. I guess it depends on how you're trying to demonstrate what you feel. Are you coming from a place, a louder, hard, more aggressive place? Mm -hmm. Or are you coming from a place where you need to explain it and then build it up? But I do know what you're saying, because let me think. Yeah, that's just... because mean... even when I'm when I'm happy singing in a song, it's like the place that I start the song is just different too. Like you know what I mean, vocally. Uh huh. But when you say vocally, are you feeling your voice in your head, in your face? In your mouth, in yeah. your throat, where are you feeling your voice? Yeah, no, I you saw my you saw me grimace like it's yeah. in my face, like yeah, it's definitely in my face. I don't know because, like I said, I I have so many different textures that I've explored and experimented that I try to be against go against the grain, even with the way that I demonstrate uh -huh. a certain emotion. Okay, so even where it comes from. I can't call it because I'm trying to go against it uh, usually uh -huh. and not be typical. You get what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Okay. So if I, if I'm angry, I usually try to bring it back to where I can explain it to you in a way to where by the time the end of the song comes, my, the buildup is coming from a place of just like belting out, like how I feel emotionally, but I've challenged myself in so many different ways as a writer and as an artist and creating and unlearning what I think I know and how I want to say something to say it different because I hear people do it all the same way all the time that I really can't answer that in a straight way because I pull from different places. So so is your, so when you're singing and part of your art vocal journey, do you mm -hmm. find that every night the feeling of how you're singing is going to be different meaning how you're placing your voice is going to be different or are you aiming for it to come from the same place so you can rely on it what is the what is the, the journey there it's both because i do feel like every day is different like today i woke up and i felt my voice was a little drier so i would sing different today if i was singing something because i would be trying to protect my voice uh-huh okay you okay. get what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. I know today my voice is not like it was yesterday, where yesterday it was, I was sweaty and it was dewy and I was singing falsettos. And I was yeah. like, today I had a drink with my family last night. Uh -huh. And so today I woke up like, uh huh. sing a little lower today, my man. Today is <laughs> not a hard day, but I just kind of know, you know? So right. if I'm writing music today, if someone's playing some chords or guitar chords or we're in there making something, I would approach it differently because of how I also know what my voice is today. Okay. But I also okay. might create something different that I didn't expect just because of that challenge. Right. What is the one thing every singer should know? One thing every singer should know to breathe, like you said. I think one thing is breathing and Identify your voice. Be you. Don't try to sound like anybody else. You have your voice, your tone. That's what makes you special. That's what makes you stand out. That's what. Uh, that's what I'm going to think of what someone told me once. That's your star, basically, to sum it all up. Like, that's you. Bro, you're you know breaking I mean? up a, a little bit. Us. Can you hear me now? Yeah, your picture is frozen, though. Oh, no. <laughs> Is he back? Nope. There you go. There you go. Oh, okay. There you go. All right, cool. It's still yeah. frozen. Um, damn. Let me move around. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all right. Uh, okay. Better? There it is. Yeah, there we go. There cool. we go. 
All right. So, yeah, um, I say to identify your voice, be yourself in your voice, whatever that means to you. Like, you know, a lot of people like, oh, no, I'm trying to think who's amazing. Like Whitney's amazing. Uh -huh. There's a lot of uh, vocally amazing people. And a lot of times people will be so gung ho about sounding like her or uh -huh. trying to emulate her. Right. Instead of developing your own sound and your own voice, because that's what's going to give you longevity and separate you from this artist and that artist and any because there's there's so many artists, but it's your voice that connects to your story and your soul and the way that you sing it. And like you saying, I de deciding which which department of your voice you're going to sing it today, but still identifying you vocally. And I feel like that's one thing that's very important right next to breathing and figuring out how to breathe correctly. When you sing, are you thinking about vowels when you sing? Do you use vowels when you sing as a way to help you support your voice? I used to, and I found myself <laughs> unconsciously just over enunciating things and over trying to dictate the way it is. And you know, and it's like, yes, it's good to do that. And I identify it, but then there are certain things about the way that I say things and my personality that lends to my my music as well because it's me. You know what I mean? Like this uh -huh. is how I say it. But then at the same time, with the knowledge of how to correctly sing with diction, it, it helps. Okay. So, let me answer this for me. Mm -hmm. To be fully present with your voice means what? To be fully present with your voice means to be. I guess in, to be fully present with your voice is to be understanding of your voice. You got to understand what you can do and what you can't. Okay. I'll give it, I'll say that. And what's your most memorable performance you've ever had? What's the most memorable performance? Mm. I have a lot of those. Um, so far, I haven't done that many TV performances yet. Okay. Um, but I'll say my most memorable one right now, I did a Soul Train performance. And I remember going, first of all, I remember I was on tour with Maxwell. Uh huh. And I had to leave the tour to go do it. So I remember everything from figuring out what I was going to wear. Uh -huh. <laughs> ordering it online like you know uh, to pulling up to Vegas to do the Soul Train to the sound check to being nervous out of my mind you can't even imagine <laughs> my first TV and it's live and there's all these all my like peers and people I've looked up to growing up you know everybody's in the audience so right. and I'm meeting them on the red carpet it's like uh but then it's like, all right, this is the moment. And I promise you, man, that was when I kind of knew. It's not. That was when I knew, 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 knew that I was going to be doing this because I remember something came on me and I snapped. I don't even remember seeing people in the audience. I remember performing, mm. like performing. And, you know, I was, I look back, I'm like, I don't even, I didn't even know I was going to slide across the stage or get on my knee. Like I didn't, that wasn't planned. We didn't rehearse that. Right. I flew in the night before. So, mm -hmm. but I remember just saying, you know what, that is called letting go and being and living in your light and your greatness and confidence Beautiful. because you already know, you know, the song. You right. know the feeling that you're trying to give off. Right. So just be that. Right. And that's exactly what I did. And so it opened it up for me, even going back on the tour after, like after that show and then going back on tour, it changed the dynamic of my performance too. It made me like a little bit more free. It was like, what's up, y'all? I'm out here. You know what I mean? It gave me a different kind of freedom because I wasn't scared no more. Right. Right. And have so you, that's why. Yeah. I'll have you ever had a vocal before. crisis before? A vocal crisis? Oh my god, bro! I was uh, I had to do like Atlanta, some like festival thing that they do every year, and um, it was like Atlanta has bad pollen, 
Oh yeah, Atlanta, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I got asthma and all it's like allergy season and I had a sinus infection. Oh, I remember this. I think I remember this. I think I called you. Yeah, I remember this. I re <laughs> yeah, I hit you I like yo, bro. Yeah. I'm happy. I don't know what to do. I hit you and I hit Erica Badu. Like, what do yeah. I do? And man, I got on that stage, but most of my songs as in on El Dorado were falsetto because i have found this new falsetto i'm like i'm about to use this every uh -huh. chance i get right most of the songs but then i didn't realize that you gotta sing this every day on tour bro same falsetto right so i go to atlanta and i pull up and i'm like yo i'm not gonna be able to do this show i can't even hit the permission i can't do it yes i can't get there yes and I remember getting like a neti pot, but even when I sung it, I tried to push it on stage. It was like, I got more voice by the time I got on the stage, but it was still like danger, danger, danger. I'm in yeah. danger. Yeah, you're on the tightrope. I was shook, but yeah, yeah, that was like, that was one for me that I remember. Beautiful. Now tell me, who are your influences? Wow. Mm greats man like stevie wonder marvin gay prince otis redding james brown aretha franklin lauren hill jodeci d'angelo david bowie sting uh jimmy hendrix my dad my dad really sings um daryl coley daryl <laughs> coley Woo! yeah like yeah. fred hammond commission who are you listening to right now? Oh, uh, I listen to everything, to be honest with you. I know it sounds like cliche, but I really do. I listen to like everything from like the whispers to uh London grammar to Westside Gun to Sir, her. Uh I love Summer Walker. I uh -huh. love Hard Lennox. Uh-huh. Um who is Snow Allegra? Okay. Uh, you know what I mean? I, and these are all homies. So it's yeah. like, these are my peers. Yeah. And I'm a fan of their music and their work too. So, but yeah, I mean, but I listen to literally everything, man. Reggae. I put my music on shuffle and I just let it go because it's, it's me. It's going to give me all the vibes I need. Yeah. So you, I have watched your career, obviously, as a friend and a mentor in some ways. But yeah. I, I noticed that you are very close with your fans. You share a lot with your fans. I try in, to. In an age of people sharing so much, what is the one thing you keep for yourself? To, I keep a lot to myself, to be honest with you. Um, I just feel like when I first got into this, I was I came in with the energy that of mystery. Mm -hmm. And maintain your mystery in yourself and don't give too much. And because I looked up, like I said, to the greats like Stevie and Otis and Marvin and uh, and Prince and uh -huh. and I watched how they did. They they weren't out here like that, sharing everything. You wanted That's to right. know, but That's they right. wouldn't let you know. That's and right. I'm like, I love that. That was intrigue. That's what made me want to know more about them. That's what made me dig more into their music or their right. lyrics to figure out more about them. And I felt like. That's the type of career and artistry I want. I want people to dig into my music and want to know more about me. But I also realized that the way that we are in music today, you have to give everything. You got to let them know what's what you put in your drink or yeah. what kind of sandwich. Did you put mayo or not? And it's like, <laughs> that's not that's not my vibe. I don't do that. I wouldn't right. even do that to normal people because I'm not even, I don't let people get close to me like that on a normal life. Right. So, and I keep the people that I even speak to or I'm close to, it's, it's very, it's close, you know? So, it, ha it was a difference for me to be able to come into this and even share like I'm doing I'm cooking in my crib and I'm gonna let y'all see what I'm cooking and I'm with my friends or I'm shooting or it's time with my daughter I'm riding in my car you know I had to figure out what was going to be the thing that I let people in and you know like I like I said I got a lot of layers to me I got a lot of comments I can talk about all kinds of things man I've been and seen so many things yeah so it's like, I do want my fans to feel like 
yo, come holla at me because I do want to hear what y'all talking about too. Mm-hmm. What are you dealing with? What song resonated with you? What I, I get stories, I get long messages, and then that really made me tap too. And then something else too. I would lo- watch like how artists would interact with their fans, and some would be like really stank and nasty. And it's like, you know what? My mission here as an artist is to inspire and to touch and to elevate and to grow and help people grow with me. So if I don't share that and if I don't speak and if I don't talk, if I don't reach out or reach back with messages, then my message is really short lived because I'm not actually doing it, you know, and I can't expect my label to do it for me. I have to be the person to say, all right, I'm going to get on this Facebook live for 30 minutes today and just talk. It don't even, I don't have to have a subject that I'm just going to talk with y'all for a minute. Right. You know, but that's choice, you know? Yeah. So, so answer this. Mm-hmm. You have 50 years down the road. You've made your mark. You have done all the things that you have wanted to do as an artist. Mm-hmm. What would you like to say about you? Man, what would I want the world to say about me? That he gave. I don't know. I never really think about that in the sense of what the world. I want. I want God to know that I was honest and I did what he was. I was supposed to do. For him, allowing me to have this moment and the gift to share. So, it's not really about people. If I'm doing, and living in my purpose, then the people will feel an array of different things. You know, some will be inspired. Some will be moved and touched and feel loved or have found love or would have found the ability to chase their dreams based off of me chasing mine so it's like my actual purpose is just to live in my truth and in my purpose that way i'm doing my life's purpose and the people will speak from that beautiful and i have one more question moving forward as you prepare mm-hmm. to go on your next tour, mm-hmm. what would you do differently? On this next tour, to be honest with you, man, I, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm about to stop smoking as much. I'm probably smoke like once a day. <laughs> but on tour, no, nah, but I'm saying on tour, literally, I'm stopped smoking because I want my voice to be the best. I want my songs to hit you the same way you push play on that digital download or that album. I want it to sound the exact same for me, for you. You know what I mean? Because if me not being sure because I'm trying to maintain my anxiety, don't get the message across, then I have actually not done my work service. You know what I'm saying? So whatever that means to anybody else, but I'm saying for me, it's, it's figuring out different practices to balance that out for me. And that way, because I feel like that's the only thing that keeps me away from being my greatest is that. So, you know, it's it's the great balance that we're creating, right? Because mm-hmm. sometimes we have to make a sacrifice for the greater good, which is Absolutely. our gift and our ability to serve our purpose. Yep. So I think that that's great information. Ro, where can people find your music, your new project? Tell us mm-hmm. a little bit more about that. Wow. Uh, you can find my music everywhere. Spotify, Apple Music, all the streaming, um, YouTube, dot, dot. I didn't put, we didn't do a hard copy this year because this time, because you know, music is changing, mm-hmm. which is also interesting because streaming is one thing, but there's a huge audience of people who don't use streaming services. They buy an album. So it's like, I'm still trying to figure out how I reach that audience when the energy of the, the industry is changing. How do I still reach that person? And that customer who wants to buy it and hold it and have something tangible, you know what I mean? So that's that. Um, but the album is called, well, it's really called Romantic. I took the roll off of it and left it at Mantic. And Mantic means divination and prophecy. Divination is to see yourself somewhere. Um, and prophecy is to speak something into existence or speak life into someone's life, manifestation, all of that. Right. But um, it really means, and divination is really, seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown by supernatural means. And I feel like, I mean, it came out in a weird, very weird day, weird time. It had me a little stressed about it coming out when it did, but 
the purpose of the album actually kind of did its own thing because we're all seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown. Everything is unknown right now. Everything yeah. is uncertain. We don't know what's next in any industry. That's right. But the one thing that's consistent and forever is love. And that's what we we are holding on to. And anybody that has love, you, you're at home with yours. You're at home with yours. I'm at home with mine. That's the, those are the things that actually matter at the end of the day. So it shows you like when it all boils down to it, all the bullshit gets slim cut off and the real things rise to the top and so i'm like yo I'm, i made this music from a real place from a creative place from an honest place even though the seeking of the knowledge of the future was just a personal journey for me of just figuring out what's next for me how do i do this how do i elevate to the next level how do i compete without competing like all of the things that you're wanting to know if you're not seeking knowledge of the future you've kind of like settled with whatever whatever life has given you but i wasn't i wanted more so i think that anybody who's aspiring for more or want to know what's next or evolving or anything personally it's the album for you listen to it you know well, and so that was a and your fans love you i have so many people who are on here like giving so many great comments they talk about how humble you are i can only vouch for your humility because you've always been this guy you're the same guy i've been the same way 10 years ago such a beautiful spirit yeah. I thank you for your time today and sharing your journey with us. I wanted to tell you, because before you jumped on, a lot of people, I was sharing about the idea of streaming versus like downloading an album mm -hmm. and how important it is for an artist like yourself, like any artist to receive a download of an album versus streaming. Yeah. Streaming is a great promotional tool. But the label gets paid from that. Yes, but the, but the download of the album is where you get paid. Absolutely. So I want to encourage everyone who's on here today who's watching this interview to download Mantic, to download yes. El Dorado, yes. download <laughs> Rose Project so that he receives the benefit of his work because he's been yeah. working hard for years uh, and he deserves it. Every artist deserves it really because it's a great task to be an artist. It is. And, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's, it's not easy. Um, yeah. But I, I honor you, brother. I love you. I love and you too, man. I'm Thank you. Very proud of you. Thank you. And please you. keep making us proud. Looking Always. You already know. Yes, I already know. All right. <laughs> Peace and love, love, bro. Love. Always. Always. Right. Love. Always. Bless man. to everybody out there. Love y'all, man. They say they love you too. Peace. <laughs> <and> love. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining Inside the Singer's Voice, episode four with Ro James. It was a wonderful conversation. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode next Monday, 3 p.m. in uh, Facebook Live, uh, where we have another special guest. You'll hear the announcement on Thursday. Take care. This is Jeremiah Abia. Peace out. <laughs>